What do I need to carry out my surveillance? We are requesting that you put together a few of the double Coke bottle floats we mentioned earlier. You should improve their visibility so boaters can avoid them as follows. An inexpensive spray can of orange luminescent enamel aimed into the bottle opening makes the empty floating bottle quite visible. Lettering the outside of the floating bottle with black enamel and the word milfoil will be another heads up to boaters and swimmers that the float should be left alone. Our boater education launch team will inform boaters of this marking so they are alerted to what we are doing. The surveillance technique that works the best is from a floating platform using two individuals. Here they are in a canoe with their U.S. Coast Guard approved personal floating devices and float bottles performing their surveillance. You can also do this using a rowboat, which is less tipsy, or you can use a kayak if you have one. The kayak is low to the water surface, permitting good visibility and highly maneuverable. In all instances, be mindful of your visibility to other watercraft and obey all boating laws. To assist you in knowing the limits of your surveillance area, paddle out to find a 12-foot depth on your left side boundary. You can find the approximate depth of water using the cord that attaches the two bottles, which has been sized for 12 to 15 feet of depth. Feel the bottom with the weighted part of the float so that the floating bottle doesn't get pulled under the surface. When you think you are close, don't worry about being precise. Leave the float to mark the left corner of the surveillance area, point A. Follow the same procedure on the right side boundary and leave another float in that corner, point B. With the corners defined, you are now ready to do the surveillance of your beachfront area. If you feel you can work without the corner markers, that's acceptable. In addition, if the float markers are used, make sure when you are done with your surveillance, you remove them so we do not fill the lake with many floats and we remove the possibility of floats being impacted by boats. On a day when conditions are best, wearing a U.S. Coast Guard approved life jacket and with float bottles in your boat, Gently maneuver back and forth between your boundaries as shown in the surveillance pattern, visually covering the entire area. If you spot any suspect plants, mark them with one of the floats. The marker float is left in place until you receive assistance, which will be discussed shortly. If you are unable or unwilling to do the water surveillance in deep water from your boat, you can consider walking your beachfront out to a depth that you're comfortable with. Having another individual to assist improves safety and an inflatable raft or tube to hold your flotation marker bottles will assist your surveillance. Be very careful not to step on plants and fragment them. Although this doesn't get the whole job done, it will provide some information we can use for the shallow section of your beachfront. Equipment, Conditions, Communications. Regardless which technique you select, be sure you use equipment available to you to enhance your safety, such as an approved Coast Guard life jacket, waistline flotation, a tube, foot coverings, sun protection, and the like. Having another individual assist you provides a good safety backup. Also, be mindful of the day and time you select to do the surveillance. Visibility is enhanced by still water, proper sunlight, and low reflections. It won't take you long to figure out the best conditions. In addition, be mindful of your visibility to other boaters. They need to see you. Most boating accidents occur the hour after sunrise and the hour before sunset. When you have completed your surveillance, call the number indicated on your handout. Report your name, address, phone, and your results. For example, nothing found or X number of suspect findings. Your call will be relayed to a dive team member who will visit your site. If in your call you indicate your desire to be present, they will try to contact you. Based on the level of activity, the response could be within 24 hours or a little longer, such as a week. Your markers should be fine for this length of time based on the test work mentioned earlier. Even if it drifts a little, it will be close enough for our team members to locate the potential weed. The flotation markers will be removed and returned to you after identification and removal, as necessary, is completed. 
Some other tips. The decision to participate is an individual one, and each individual must make the decision that is correct for them. You may wish to volunteer, but your age or physical situation may prevent your participation, or you are very capable but have a neighbor who is in this condition. Discussing this with a neighbor for the purpose of providing assistance or receiving assistance is encouraged. You may wish to discuss this with our Milfoil Scout Program leaders who may be able to find assistance for you. Let us know by calling and we'll do our best. Properties that border the water are not all individually owned. We have town beaches and state land, which includes campgrounds, homeowners association beaches like Blue Sky and the Lodges, institutions like Sunrise and Word of Life, and businesses like the marina and motels. Our dive teams will work out a surveillance plan for the town and state beachfronts. We're requesting that each homeowners association, as well as the institutions, organize their efforts internally to provide a lead person and arrange for volunteers within their respective groups to provide the surveillance. Letting us know who the lead is by phone or email would assist our coordination efforts. If you represent a business, we would be interested in your approach. Setting it up like the homeowners associations and institutions may work for you. This presentation can be made available along with sign-up forms for whoever needs it. If you need any support for any of your gatherings to assist in articulating this message and answering questions, we would be happy to provide that assistance also. Although the risks involved in the activity you will be volunteering for are minimal, there is always a small possibility something could happen. It is impossible for us to know everyone's physical condition or capabilities. We do not know the underwater terrain of your property, and we cannot be present when the large number of expected volunteers carry out their surveillance. Accordingly, it is judged that the best approach to this situation is to have every volunteer clearly understand that they're responsible for their own safety and welfare. The sign-up sheet has three key sections. Please read the first two carefully. If you concur, then fill in the third section and sign up to be a volunteer scout. The first section, shown by the arrow, highlights the depth of water you will be working in, safety requirements, and situations you may encounter. It addresses assistance by others and equipment you may need to do the surveillance. You must be careful not to trespass on another person's property. There's a statement covering this. Finally, you're asked to understand and acknowledge that you will indemnify East Shore Scroon Lake Association and Scroon Lake Association should they be sued for injuries or damage caused by you. This highlighted paragraph is a waiver you are asked to sign. It states you understand the document and agree to waive any and all claims against the parties named. The waiver also includes claims by the volunteer's estate, executor, administrator, and heirs. This section requests you print your name and provide your signature and date. Your address, phone, and email are requested. The body of water is also requested. For example, Scroon Lake, or Scroon River, or both. To reiterate, you should not do anything you feel you are not capable of handling or you believe is unsafe. Walking in water up to your shoulders is one thing. In water over your head is another. U.S. Coast Guard approved life jackets, swimming capability, canoes, kayaks, tubes, your personal health, a companion, whether you're in a navigable area with your boat traffic, etc., should all be in your thoughts and addressed as required to maximize your safety. Even though the risks are considered small, being cautious and prudent will serve you well. Again, it is important that you not attempt to hand harvest the weed yourself. There are specific procedures to prevent fragments from being lost and rerouting. This plan may be a bit ambitious based on the number of volunteers required to make it a success. The task is quite simple and will get easier with a little experience. It is also not time consuming for an individual landowner and hopefully you can integrate it with recreation you would do anyway. The impact that this scout program will have on the welfare of our precious waterway is enormous. We all have a stake in this. Working together we will find and remove this troublesome weed 
and keep this precious waterway of ours clean and usable for ourselves and future generations.